Listen, <sighs> I told you already, Sean Puffy Combs may be guilty of some of that. I don't believe he's guilty of all of that. But more importantly, what y'all need to understand, Puffy would not be going down if there were not higher ups who wanted to take him down. Let, let me say that again. Puffy is too well connected. He's not going down unless there are higher ups who want him down. So there are white folks who want to destroy Puff. And that's why all this is happening right now. Just like Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, whether or not they were guilty has nothing to do with the takedown because many people are guilty. Let me say that again. Whether or not they are guilty has nothing to do with it because many people in Hollywood and the music industry are guilty of the same crimes Bill Cosby allegedly committed, R. Kelly allegedly committed, Sean Puffy Combs allegedly committed. That stuff happens all the time. It's not right and we will not condone it, but it happens all the time. So Puffy is not being taken down because he trafficked women allegedly, abused women allegedly. That's not why he's being taken down because that's what they do. He's being taken down because somebody in the power structure wants him taken down. And I believe it's very interesting. I believe it's very interesting that Puffy doesn't start getting into this trouble until he sues that liquor company. Remember Puffy had a lawsuit against the liquor company? What was the name of the company Puff, Puffy just sued? Puffy just sued a liquor company. Diego, September 29th, 2023, Sean Puffy Combs sued Diego back in May, accused the company of failing to invest resources into Ciroc and De Leon and treating them as urban products. So Puffy sued this white liquor company for discrimination. Puffy sued the white liquor company for discrimination. Company Diego, D-I-G-O, whatever, however you say it, Diego, back in May, he accused them of racism against the black liquor companies, said they failed to invest resources in Ciroc and De Leon. So Puffy sues the big liquor company for racial discrimination, failing to properly invest in Ciroc and De Leon, and here we are. If you think those two things are unrelated, something's wrong with you. If you think those two things are unrelated, something is wrong with you. If you think those two issues are unrelated, something is wrong with you, brothers and sisters. You don't go down unless the power structure wants you down. You don't go down unless the power structure wants you down. You don't go down unless the power structure wants you down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did y'all hear about this? Did y'all hear? Did y'all hear about the black woman who was charged with murder for what happened with the baby, y'all? The black woman was charged with murder for miscarrying her child. Did y'all hear about that? Here we go. A black woman was criminally charged after a miscarriage. It shows the perils of pregnancy post row. A black Ohio woman who miscarried in her bathroom has been charged with abuse of a corpse. 33 year old Watts, who had not shared the news of her pregnancy even with her family, made her first prenatal visit to a doctor's office behind Mercy Health St. Joseph's Hospital in Warren, a working class city 60 miles southeast of Cleveland. The doctor said while a fetal heartbeat was still present, Watts's water had broken prematurely and the fetus she was carrying would not survive. He advised heading to the hospital to have her labor induced so she could have what amounted to an abortion to deliver the non-viable fetus. 
Otherwise, she would face significant risk of death. Records of her case show. That was a Tuesday in September. What followed was a harrowing three day entailing multiple trips to the hospital. Watts miscarrying into and then flushing and plunging. She miscarried into and then flushed and plunged a toilet at her home. A police investigation of those actions and Watts, who was black, being charged with abuse of a corpse. That's a fifth degree felony punishable by up to a year in prison and a twenty five hundred dollar fine. Her case was sent last month to a grand jury. It has touched off national firestorm over the treatment of pregnant black women in the aftermath of the U.S. Supreme Court Dobbs v. Jackson's Women's Health Organization decision that overturned Roe v. Wade. Civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump elevated Watts' plight in a post to Twitter. Michelle Goodwin, a law professor at the University of California, Irvine, and author of Policing the Womb, said the case follows a pattern of women's pregnancies being criminalized against them. She said those efforts have long overwhelmingly targeted black and brown women. Even before Roe was overturned, studies show that black women who visited hospitals for prenatal care for prenatal care were 10 times more likely than white women to have child protective services and law enforcement called on them even when the cases were similar. Post Dobbs, what we see is a kind of a wild, wild west, said Goodwin. You see the kind of muscle flexing by district attorneys and prosecutors wanting to show that they're going to, that they're going to be vigilant. They're going to take down women, black women who violate the ethos coming out of the state legislature. She called black women canneries in the coal mine for the hypervigilant type of policing women of all races might expect from the nation's network of health care providers, law enforcers and courts now that abortion isn't federally protected. At the time of Watts's miscarriage, abortion was legal in Ohio through 21 weeks, six days of pregnancy. Her lawyer, Tracy Timko, said Watts sat for eight hours at the hospital awaiting care on the eve of her pregnancy, reaching 22 weeks before leaving without being treated. So she was in a hospital waiting, y'all. A pregnant black woman sat in the hospital for eight hours. She sat in the hospital for eight hours. A pregnant black woman sat in the hospital for eight hours and didn't receive no care before she left. And didn't receive no care before she left. The pregnant black woman sat in the hospital for eight hours before she left. It was the fear of this is going to constitute an abortion and are we able to do that? The hospital didn't return calls seeking confirmation. Why is it the hospital being charged with a crime? Why is it the hospital being charged with a crime? Why is it the hospital being charged with a crime? The issue isn't how the child died, when the child died. It's the fact the baby was put in a toilet, was large enough to clog up the toilet, left in the toilet, and she went on with her day. So she's not being charged with murder. She's being charged with abuse of a corpse. What do y'all think, brothers and sisters? She's not being charged with murder. Our sister in Ohio isn't being charged with murder. She's being charged with abuse of a corpse. What do y'all say about this? She went to the hospital, sat there for eight hours the night before she delivered. She went to the hospital and sat there for eight hours on the night before she delivered. It seems like the next day she went to the bathroom, the baby came out, and then she flushed the baby. Should she be charged with abuse of a corpse? Should she be charged with abuse of a corpse? 33-year-old sister. The forensic investigator said they felt what appeared to be small feet with toes inside the toilet. The forensic investigator report that they felt what appeared to be small feet with toes inside the toilet. Police took the toilet, broke the toilet open to retrieve the intact fetus as evidence. An autopsy confirmed that the fetus died in utero before passing through the birth canal. That means the hospital killed that baby. If the baby died in utero when she was at the hospital the night before trying to get some help and the hospital made her sit there for eight hours and never helped her so she was forced to leave, shouldn't the hospital be charged with murder?
Somebody said, how can it be a corpse if it never took a breath? Somebody said, how can she be charged with abuse of a corpse if the baby never lived? How can it be a corpse? They're arguing that in order to be a corpse, you must have been alive. They're saying the baby may have never been alive. The baby never came into the world alive. So how can she be charged with abuse of a corpse? What do y'all think about this, brothers and sisters? You said she should have went to another hospital. I think that's kind of insensitive. You said she should have went to another hospital. I think that's kind of insensitive. And let me explain to you why I think that's kind of insensitive. Black women go through a lot of hell. Black women go through a lot of hell. And on top of all the hell that black women go through, taking care of children, suffering racism, sexism, rape, molestation, abuse, and everything else, on top of everything black women go through in this country, they also have to carry children and birth them into this world. I'm not taking up for the sister flushing the corpse down the toilet. I don't think that was appropriate, but I don't think she should. It wasn't appropriate, but I don't think she should go to jail. I believe that sister was depressed. I believe that sister has mental health issues. I believe if we met with that sister and talked to that sister, we would understand why she flushed the baby down the toilet and went on with her life. But the baby was already deceased. She might have did it to get it off her mind. She might have been so much in trauma and in pain that the only way she felt she could get rid of her trauma and her pain was to flush the baby down the toilet. I'm not making excuses. All I know is black women go through a lot of hell in this country. Pregnant black women go through the most hell. Pregnant black queens go through the most hell. Pregnant black goddesses, pregnant black empresses, they go through the most hell. So I'm not going to judge her. Black women have the highest population of undiagnosed depression. Black women have the highest population of undiagnosed depression. And the reason why black women don't seek treatment is because the black church tells them all they need is Jesus. The reason black women don't seek treatment is the black church tells our black women all they need is Jesus when they really need a psychologist. All they need is Jesus when they really need a therapist. All they need is Jesus when they really need a counselor. So I'm not going to beat up on my black sister. I'm not going to beat up. I don't know what she went through. Imagine sitting in the hospital for eight hours, pregnant with a baby, and the hospital never waits on you. Why isn't the hospital being charged with neglect of a fetus? Why isn't the hospital being charged with neglect of a fetus? Why isn't the hospital being charged with neglect of a fetus? They want to lock our sister up? For a baby that came in the world already deceased, she should not have flushed the baby down the toilet. I understand. But there are contextual psychological issues at play. There are contextual psychological issues at play. There are contextual psychological issues. Does she have a family? Does she have family support? Where is the father of the child? Was she raped? Was this an incest baby? I'm not passing judgment without all the information. I'm not passing judgment without all the information. You got white people who kill black people and go home. They don't even go to jail. You got white people who kill black people and go home and they don't even go to jail. You got white people who kill black people. They go home. They don't even go to jail. But y'all want this black woman to go to jail. For flushing the unborn deceased child down the toilet. I can't say that unless I know all the information. But I want to say this. I want to say this. In the social media era, we have become so judgmental and condemnatory. We crucify black people without an honest trial before the community. I didn't say trial in court. I could give a damn about the white man's court. I said we have to give people the right of a trial before the black community. If if y'all believe T.D. Jakes is guilty, T.D. Jakes should be brought, be brought before the black community and T.D. Jakes should be forced to stand trial in front of the black community. I have no problem standing in as the hearing officer for the T.D. Jakes Tribunal. I have no problem serving as the hearing officer for the T.D. Jakes Tribunal. But I believe we have to give people 
the right of a trial before the community. If y'all believe Sean Puffy Combs is guilty, Sean Puffy Combs need to stand trial before the community. Let white man justice be white man justice, but we need black man justice. Some haters go to jail. Some make it into hell. It's King Kong, Ifa Tunde Avenue. You know what we doing, getting the school ready. We getting the school ready. We ain't taking no breaks. It's about to work. FDMG is coming, baby. FDMG is coming. Where my Switzerland Africans at? I see we got the Zest Fest in the building. We got the Zest Fest in the building. A grown man asking Dr. Umar to twerk. That's the Zesty Fest. That's the Zest Fest. We're not feeling the Zest Fest. Okay? All rainbow gangers exit left. I had to play, pay the gas company. I had to pay the glass company. We just got all the glass fixed up, brothers and sisters. We got all the glass on the fire extinguishers today. Where my FDMG loyal donors at? Where my FDMG loyal donors at? Where my F... DMG loyal donors, we got all the glass fixed on the school, y'all. So all the glass in the classroom door windows, all the glass on the fire extinguishers. We got all the glass fixed. I'm waiting on the tree company to come and tell we got to cut some of these trees off so the leaves stop going on the roof, clogging up the drains. We got to get some of these trees cut. We getting the school ready, y'all. We getting the school ready. Conscious Singles Convention going to be at FDMG Academy. I got a question for y'all, brothers and sisters. A man who spends 11 hours on Thanksgiving talking about the Prince of Pan-Africanism. A man who spends 11 hours on the internet talking about King Kong consciousness. A man who spends 11 hours on Thanksgiving talking about another man. Cannot be healthy. That's all I'm going to say to that. As far as that other guy talking about he's going to end my career, I'm not even going to speak to that. He must have lost his damn mind. He must have lost his damn mind. We're not even going to go into that. See, we're not going to feed the hate, brothers and sisters. We're not going to feed the hate. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FD. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hold on. Baba Denzel, what's going on? Peace and Pan-Africanism. Uh, no, that was that was that was license and inspection. When L and I come up, you gotta hop out and get all your questions asked, brothers and sisters. That was license and inspection. That's code enforcement with the city of Wilmington, Delaware. You feel me? When they pull up. You gotta hop out and get all your questions asked. Cause we trying to put a gate in front of the school. We trying to put a gate in front of the school. We trying to put a gate in front of the school, brothers and sisters. Trying to put a gate in front of the school, brothers and sisters. <laughs> 